And we are live. Hi, friends. Or friend, I would say. The first viewer I've been streaming, I've not been streaming for a couple of months, actually over a year now, I, I, I would say. There were some reasons, um, but I'm slowly, surely but getting back into things. How are you doing, friends? My name is Fani Reinders. Uh, for those who don't know me, I like to do little experiments on stream, specifically .NET and Azure stuff, but um, I can do anything, right? Well, we all can do anything, but I'm up for any challenge. What I like to do is kind of uh, pick little things up and, uh, you know, try to poke the, the knobs and, 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 uh, and things and uh, try them out and see how it works because it's cool to learn every day, you know? Um, I don't know anything myself, or everything myself. I know a little bit, I would say. But uh, yeah, I think we can all learn, and uh, learning is very cool. Someone uh, told me once that if someone teaches you something and you don't pay it forward, that knowledge is gone forever. So let's get this uh, stream started. Welcome to everyone, host 00312. I don't know your name, but thank you so much for the follow, uh, for the folks that do wanna follow me. There's a little, oh, this side. There's a little follow button uh, on the screen on Twitch. So I'm trying to still kind of uh, get back into the streaming thing. I've been, uh, like I said, I've not been doing that for quite some time now, but uh, I think it's time to, to kind of dust off the old cam and and all these other things, and uh, let's let's head back in uh, into the show, and let's get started. So, uh, how does this thing actually work again? I think there we go. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, well, that's just stopped <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I need to. Uh, yeah, you actually caught me in the act of dancing, but it's uh, it's 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 part of the stream. Uh, I need to kind of tweak that configuration a bit. Uh, so on today's agenda, I was thinking, you know, uh, I'm working currently in an IoT space where we uh, do like a lot of smart buildings and a lot of IoT devices, talking to the cloud, vice versa, blah blah blah. And there's a couple of challenges there, right? So when you when you when you talk about IoT, there's very device specific, vendor specific problems uh, that one needs to solve. And for those that don't, that that's not aware or um, they don't know what IoT is, it's called Internet of Things. And I mean, this is anything from a from a smart speaker to a to a phone it could even be an, a thing on the internet. Um, and basically, those things talk. You know, send telemetry like a thermostat, for, for instance, they sent telemetry to a uh, to some kind of server, and that server can be anywhere on a, on a network, or it could be in the cloud like Azure. Uh, and we we are using our platform we are hosting in Azure, and we are collecting all these kind of telemetry from uh, from these devices. And when you when you really like implement these things you know it's it, it gets challenging because um, you need to be able to scale very well and uh, what we've learned is if we base our things on protocols instead of technology things just scale better right so one of the protocols when you talk in in the iot space is uh, is mqtt what does mqtt stand for let's maybe scroll to the screen there's my screen, it's, that still works. And I see, well, MQTT, just just Google it. You know, it's a standard for IoT messaging. So it stands for what? What does it stand for? I don't even know. What is, uh, what does MQTT stand for? I think MQTT stands for, I don't know what it even stands for. <laughs> but it's just one of, those, one of the standards and it's a messaging protocol um, and they are, two sides here so you have the publisher and you have the subscriber right the publisher is normally called the, the broker and the subscriber is your client right so typically you'll have a a client like a a, a thermostat yet again let's use that example that sends uh, uh, temperature 
uh, telemetry to a broker, to a, a publisher. Um, and well, actually, I'm, I'm wrong. So it sends data to the to this broker, right? And the problem we have currently, our our IoT hub is a broker itself. And I was thinking, well, cool. But what about broker to broker communication? So if you have a on-premise broker or a cloud, it could be AWS or it could be anything. How do you kind of relay those messages back to the other broker? Because remember, that's server to server calls in a sense. And normally there's plenty of ways of interfacing these kind of things um, on, on the cloud, right? And I was trying, okay, well, maybe we can, we can write something together like a little bridge to uh, to get the messages from one MQTT broker to another. But I'm going to take a step further. We're going to see if we can write a little function, Azure Function. So for Azure Functions, for those that don't know about Azure Functions, it's uh, Azure's kind of serverless technology. It's almost like Lambda. Well, it is exactly what Lambdas are in AWS world. Uh, so you can write your own little functions that does things. So normally, typically a function in Azure, they uh, react to certain triggers. Like it can be a HTTP trigger, if you invoke it, or it can be a timer trigger, like for every interval or whatever. Um, but also it can be a trigger that acts upon a message that is received on an event hub or, a, or a IT hub or something. That's great and all, but that just reacts. There's the built-in things in uh, in Azure or IoT Hub that reacts to a message received in a broker or IoT Hub. But we want to get a message from a different broker, right? So of course there are. You know, if we just do a quick Google, MQTT broker Azure function. And by all means, uh, folks, please, uh, in the chat here, or there, uh, other way, <laughs> screen is flipped, please uh, do your comments or your questions, and we can see if we can answer them all together. So there's this uh, lovely blog post by Kies Schollart uh, that they have done. And this is exactly what I uh, had in mind, but with a kind of a few other caveats. To have a, a MQTT broker, like a, almost like an IoT hub, but not Microsoft specific, but a, a protocol specific broker, an MQTT broker, you sit on somewhere else. And that can be on premise or it can be a different cloud or whatever. And I want to write this little Azure function that kind of acts like the bridge between the MQTT and our IoT hub that's now sitting. And not in this picture, but you know, it needs to relay the messages to a device in Azure IoT Hub. It's kind of an MQTT to Azure IoT Hub bridge, so to call it. But I don't want to make it specific to one topic, right? Because how this is used, very, very, very cool, is uh, just an example. And I love the way how Azure Functions makes it uh, easy to to bind things. So in Azure Functions, you have this notion of bindings, bindings and triggers and stuff like that. So this is a trigger, a MQTT trigger that will act upon when a topic, a certain topic is is invoked. So when there's a message that, that gets broadcast that's um, on a broker that has a certain topic, it will be kind of populated in that message parameter, okay? And then furthermore, you can then create a new message to kind of relay that message out to somewhere else, right? There's a, a out topic that he creates there, or they create there. And this is also interesting. So if you use Azure Functions consumption plan, the host will be terminated after 10 minutes of inactivity. It's also very interesting to, uh, to know and understand. So the hosting models of Azure Functions, uh, there are two. Uh, there is the, uh, the consumption plan one, which is like build per second and blah, blah, blah. But it is also the app service plan one that's more kind of a dedicated hosting, basic or whatever. Uh, that gets charged by the hour. Uh, but, but the caveat here is because this is actually running uh, in the background, if you use consumption plan, it will time out in 10 minutes. 
because of design. Because the consumption plan is designed for um, for small small workloads that gets executed. So what you want to do is a function needs to execute as quick as possible. All right. So that's the kind of vanilla Azure Functions that we talk about. Um, yeah, so, so basically that's one thing to remember, but we could get away with uh, if you um, if you use Azure durable functions. I just we just need kind of need to explore what is the kind of the caveats there and if we can use it. Myself, my kind of non-functional requirements I want to do here is it, need, it needs to be very cheap. It needs to be very simple, right? We're not sending a rocket to the moon. But also what we want to do is we want to make it very much vendor agnostic. So that you can plug in this bridge into anywhere and based on configuration it needs to subscribe to each vendor's uh, topic that you define in configuration so you have one piece of code that can kind of execute for multiple uh, vendors uh, or multiple type of brokers uh, as long as it's mqtt that's the kind of thing so we base our things around protocols and not around technology very important so quick, if we do like a little little drawing of what we're going to be doing. So I think, you know, please, let's uh, let's all think together, right? So we have this um, three boxes, I would say, almost like a like a bridge, right? So we here, we have a, we actually have four boxes. So there's the four, the fourth box, right? So first of all, it, this could be a thermostat. Is that even readable? There we go. That is a thermostat, right? Then we have a MQTT broker. Then we have some bridge. Uh, this could be functions. For instance, right uh, and then we have the IoT hub easy IoT hub here right these are the parties kind of that's that's involved in this uh, in this ecosystem of our experiments and of course there are I think there are plenty of bridges uh, out there that runs on containers and, and stuff like that we can all we, we will be kind of uh, exploring them uh, in this coming Let's call it a series of, of videos that solves this specific but you know interesting problem because there's many ways to skin a cat right but there's kind of i think probably limited right ways and good ways i think that will uh, that will be cost effective and scalable um that's that's good to remember so we have the thermostat sending data um, to a mqtt broker and this can be anything right and then what we need to do is we need to have this bridge function it goes kind of uh, goes actually two ways i would say it goes that way and it goes that way because when this bridge starts up when these consumers of these messages start up they say hey broker i'm interesting in interested in these kind of messages on this topic so that's where, where it starts up it needs to kind of tell the broker Whenever you get a message with these topics, send it to moi, into me. Then um, it will then work, right? That's how MQTT work. It pops up. You subscribe to certain messages. So first of all, you'll have the, the subscription, and then second of all, you'll have the the message that will that will come to your to your bridge, right? And then, furthermore, when it gets a message, we typically don't want to touch that message because we could, we could touch the message, but you know, for simply simplistic reasons, we want to keep the, the the stuff that's received on this Azure IoT Hub kind of the same that was received in the MQTT broker. For instance, if the message is I don't know, like my ugly JSON. Let's say, oh, let's say this is value. I don't know, was it 24 or something? It's 
how hot do we want it to be? 24, 24, 25, 25. That's degrees Celsius, not, not Fahrenheit. <laughs> so let's say just a simple, um, a very simple, what do you call it? A uh, JSON payload, right? That gets uh, sent here. That same payload I want to be able to be sent here. Right? And when my my application, let's just draw my application here, my code. It's gonna be processing it. Let's just call this my app. It's gonna be processing this whole thing. Not working. Paint my friend, come on, work with me. Here we go. That's my app. And I want my app to kind of also get that uh, that value in. So all over this needs to happen and it needs to happen seamlessly um, I don't want to be as a developer when I get a new device type like a Logitech or a, or a, I don't know I'm just bender calling here to be able to you could but to be able to kind of uh, deploy more infrastructure because we kind of want to build it sassy you know, software as a service and make it all configurable uh, configurable that's the word I'm looking for uh, so this is actually what we want. So we want this thermostat sending data to the broker and we have some bridge uh, that in whatever technology we can build it in. It's, uh, let's say for instance, Azure Functions um, based on a subscription level thing. And it will, when it gets a message, it can just relay that message through to the IoT app and it will kind of do the same thing, but uh, to, the, to the application. And an application then can, can do stuff with that message, like normal stuff, right? Um, like for analytics purposes and stuff like that. So what? I, so I'm going to be trying to see if we can focus on. Oh, not that. See if we can focus on a little this this part of the the, the application. But I, I want to still kind of first of all get my hands dirty on MQTT and how it how it works. You know, get back into business. You know, see what did I miss? Is there any caveats around that? So let's uh, let's focus our attention here. All right. Are we good? Peter, hi, just joined. What do we need the broker for? Now, just joined, uh, I don't know if you catch that. Uh, I just saw that, uh, just see. So this specific problem I'm presenting is that, let's say we have a platform that has an IoT hub and all that kind of things. This is also a broker, like an MQTT broker. Right, and this is also MQTT broker. Um, the problem is that this world does not know about this world. This device, this thermostat, only sends it to one broker. So I don't have any control over this thermostat. So this thermostat is pre-configured to send to one broker only. But I do have control over your, uh, and this is typically a cloud, right? I do have control over what I get from this broker, so then I can pump it into my platform. So typically when I can configure the field gateway or, 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 or sensor, typically, you know, yes, of course, you can send it directly to this IoT hub. But in my case, I don't have control over it. This is all kind of locked down. It's all locked down. And that's the problem. Yeah, so basically separation of domains. Yes, basically separation of domains. We, that's that. Um, if we do have control over that devices, please do not use this kind of over architecture. I mean, this is overkill. Just configure your your device to send to your MQTT broker as the IG app. Uh, but in this case, this is all locked down. I only have access to the broker. I do not, do not have access to the, to the devices. And that's kind of what we... Uh, while we do this. And I think this is an interesting problem to solve. And before the stream, I've been um, doing a bunch of Googling, right? So MQTT, QTT broker, like my history suggests, uh, let's say Docker. <laughs> let's see. So there is a bunch of, oh, let's say MQTT broker bridge. Docker, there we go, simple, there we are, this one. A simple MQTT to Azure IoT Hub bridge container. 
Nice. I saw this one. So let's let's try this one out. I mean, this is this is a container, right? In my opinion, not exactly serverless, but fine. Opinions can matter. <laughs> so the idea is we can. So based on technology, right? We can. I don't really care. As you need some bridge, some logic that will run to um, that do stuff. Peter says, I have a quick message to broker to you in a case you don't know it already. You have a quick message to broker? What do you mean by that? Uh, I'm going to around, uh, I'm going around making sure people know about the brand new software and game development category. Interesting. Into game development. What kind of games do you develop? Like 3D games or strategy games? Well, wow, that's cool. It was just added this month. Amazing. I'm just gonna quickly continue with this, then we can uh, take up the game, uh, the gaming thing later. I myself just uh, actually bought myself a uh, an Xbox S, I think, small one because I'm kind of a flight simulator fan. Uh, I did not know that you can play Xbox games on the PC and on the Xbox. Well, it depends on the game, I, I would say. But uh, so maybe one day I can do like a live stream how I crash planes. <laughs> right. So in my opinion, I'm going to try the whole nine yards, trying to to see if we can build this bridge with, with a serverless Azure function, maybe durable functions. But to get there, we're going to be doing a bunch of experiments. Like we can maybe do a console application and then see, okay, well, maybe there's a, there's a containerized application that can work. But I found one that's that's here on the screen. Uh, I think it's this one that could work, right? Uh, what does Peter says? I personally don't, but there is ton of coders and game devs that are in there, which really discover the science statements. Oh, awesome stuff! So just maybe explain to me, Peter, what you meant by you have a quick message to broker to you. I maybe I'm a bit. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Just explain, then uh, we can get it. Right, so let's see. How will this work? All right, so this is a very simple project. Uh, okay, and it uses the device connection string, MQTT server, MQTT topic. Great. Right, and then blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we need, to, okay. Ah, I see. It was a message about a new category. Oh, so you mean on Twitch, there's a new category for these kind of things. Software and game development. Oh, okay. Very cool. So what is this? Your own category? I did not know that. See, I'm, I'm like, like a year past, like what? <laughs> It was a bit confusing for me, but uh, I think that's that's a given. Uh, you, you can just maybe tag me as a newbie. <laughs> anyway, I'm just gonna see if I can do this because uh, myself been been not so hands on coding the the past couple of months. But I'm a techie by heart, right? So let's see if we can pump some code out. So what do we need here? I'm just gonna actually start a. Uh, an Azure window. Let's log in into our Azure environment. Folks, I must also just uh, bear in mind, I do not have too much time today to stream, but uh, so let's break this up into a couple of, a couple of sections, right? So Peter, my friend, what are you saying? Uh, no, it was suggested, uh, requested by Twitch user voice, blah, blah, blah. No, okay, no. That's my message. Don't want to interrupt. You don't interrupt. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for hanging around. Always welcome. Sound like Steve Jobs. One last thing. What is it, Peter, my friend? <laughs> right, so the first thing I do is 
Wow, thank you so much for that chair, Peter. Thank you so much. Awesome stuff. One bit, amazing. I wish it was a Bitcoin though. <laughs> Bitcoin's been kind of a roller coaster ride for those crypto fanatics out there. So let's see, what do we have here? A lot of resource groups. So this is Azure, by the way, uh, for those that don't know what Azure is, it's, a, it's an awesome cloud platform. And I love the new search they're putting here, Western Europe. I'm in Holland, by the way. So let's see if we can uh, do a bunch of things here. Uh, let's call this, uh, I don't know, test. Stream test. Yeah, do that, great. I don't know what, my, what to call my resource groups these days. <laughs> well, that was blazing fast. Right, so let's see. First of all, let's uh, see if we can uh, get this thing going. Okay, so it's a container that we need to create. So this is like, this is one way of doing it. I think this is the, uh, what is it, what will this do? This is the, I think the, the coding way of doing it. So what will this do? AZ container create. So if you use the AZ CLI, you can kind of execute this um, and you can specify your resource group name. So in this case, what I've done, I've done my resource group name, which is stream test. Yeah, there's a stream test. And the name of the service. So the name with, uh, this is the container service I want to do. So let's call this MQTT, MQTT um, broker. I don't know, broker. And then, uh, this is the, so dash E in this case, if I can remember correctly, these are your environmental variables. This is your application specific uh, stuff that you want to pass through to your container instance. So the first part is your uh, AZCLI to create a container instance. So we're going to be using Docker instances and stuff or Docker containers to, to host this example. And we're going to be creating a new instance called MQTT Broker, putting it into the stream test. And we want to pass down a, a bunch of um, connection strings. But I think before we move on, I think we also need to create a IoT Hub. Right. IoT Hub, West Europe. Let's all keep it in the same region, folks. Let's say... Uh, MQTT, uh, let's call it Barney IoT. I think this was already taken though. Barney IoT, okay, that works. All these other things, basic, free, free still available. I don't really care. Oh, you know what? I need to not make it free because I need twins later. I'll get to that in a second. I need to get that in a second. Let's take a management. Let's go to the, let's just go to the basic tier. I think basic, you can probably upgrade later on, right? So not really iffy about these kind of things because Microsoft has been so, uh, so nice to me of, of, of kind of giving me a sponsorship. Um, I'm an MVP myself. So you get these kind of perks, uh, kind of play around with the technologies and stuff like that. So while that's deploying, we have our IT hub, right? And what else do we need to configure? So we will do the whole uh, device connection string there. And the MQTT server, we also need to configure. So the thing is, how do I get an MQTT server? Do I need to, because I want to either run one, build one, I don't know. MQTT server online or something best way of just googling it a public mqtt broker by hive now let's see does this work this is free <laughs> i don't know by the client is the hive port oh so now how does this work we host a public hive broker experiment now let's go out there 
So, all right, so this is all the messages. Okay, wow, this is amazing. This is all the messages coming into the broker, and these are the messages. Okay, so we can just use this <laughs> to experiment. But the thing is, what is the topics here? How do you work this thing? Okay, and then you can actually broker. Da -da. Okay, but now what's the... Okay, but that's interesting, but how do you actually use it? And there's a certain topic that needs to be used. Subscriptions, retained. Maybe there's another one. All right, manage broker. Let's log in, really? I don't want to pay for things. I just want a sample. We have maybe have someone uh, mosquito org eclipse this is like a kind of a need to host this i'm not sure if you can host this in a container mqtt broker locker you can use the, the high one as well <laughs> amazing great Okay, so this run, so maybe, yeah, maybe let's just first start off with this thing. Because I think that we we, we tend to overcomplicate things when we uh, want to do more stuff, right? Right, so we have this, uh, this, this broker that we can connect these stuff to. So we're going to need to pass in this information yeah so the mqtt server i think it's uh, these things so that's the broker the topic i don't know what the topic is is it blank that's the thing i have no idea um i think also i need to pass in my how do you know the credentials here yeah, that's the other thing i don't really know because, uh, yeah. This is even a thing. Taste.mosquito.org. Let's see. Three for testing. Amazing. Yes. We could also use this one. Is the how do you normally kind of authenticate yourself? Yeah, because that's the thing I don't know. Because we want son of listening. Again, let's keep it simple. The full address, the relative address of the topic. Now. Cool. So let's uh, let's test that out. Going back to our little configuration file thingy. The topic. Do I should, should I just say that? I don't know. Just. Now let's just call it slash. I have no idea. All right. So let's have that. Uh, now wh what we need to do. Sorry, I'm just uh, bouncing off all these tabs. 
So I want to create my IoT device in uh, my IoT Hub first to get my connection string. So here I call it my, let's call it my thermostat. Thermostat. Or test device. Let's call this test device. Right, let me just save it. And in a second or four, refresh, there's my test device there. But to connect to this thing, I just can copy that connection string. And typically, you know, for your eyes only, folks, <laughs> here is the connection string to push the data to. So please do not push the data there. Let's okay, copy that. All uh, right, so let's see how this works. So if I, where's the CLI? Here's the CLI. Okay, amazing. While that's booting up, I love the way you can just like go places with uh, with Azure. Where is my stream test? There we go. Here's my IoT Hub. And what I want to do is I want to paste this guy in there. And I want to say, you know what? Stream test. Stream test not found. Probably it's because the wrong subscription. So AZ. How do I, how do I use this? How do I go to a AZ account? Okay, let's see. AZ, oh, I saw AZ account. All right, so now this is in the wrong subscription. So I need to switch accounts. So to do that, AZ account set, I believe it is. And this is subscription. Subscription here is called what? I just like copy that. Will this work? Okay, that will work. So now this will also work. Right, that's working. So now... If I do not mistaken, it will now deploy a Azure container instance. And truth behold, doing its thing. Let's see. Let's go on uh, focus assist here and just put alarms on. Okay. Well, that's doing its thing. I wonder if it will now. There we go. That container instance is running. Okay. While that's doing its thing, so obviously I need to see where my messages come in to play, right? So what I'll do is in this resource group, I will also go and create a, oh, it's created. Now it's running. It's running. Okay. That's great. It's all running. So now the, the, the second thing I want to do is I want to create this, like a function that will represent my app. So if, if I go back here, I want to kind of create this thing because I've already created the IoT Hub. There's some broker and I, there's this image now that's uh, that's running in the in the container instance. Um, I'm gonna kind of create this app now to kind of see what do I see. So Azure Functions. No, that's strange. It should actually work out functions. Why is it not bringing up? Really? Come now. Just create a function. Function, oh, actually, great. Function, a function app. Now, the cool thing about a function app is now I'm just gonna do it through the UI. Just quick and dirty. It's a, it's a thing, right? I'm gonna say Farney, um, IoT app. Let's just call that that. That should be available. All right, there's a docket container as well, which is cool. Who wants to do that? Let's go .NET version 
Wow. Six. Let's let's live on the edge. Let's go for six. <laughs> let's see what happens. I think part of the problem will be going to that beta six version or the previous six version. Let's see. <laughs> let's see what happens. I'm all for kind of living on edge and doing the thing. So it's going to create a storage account, blah, blah, serverless, all this kind of great stuff. I do want to kind of turn off because this is kind of sneaky. I don't always want to create an application insights um, instance because it just kind of clutters my whole view on the world. Right, so when that is in progress, so or for for the folks that do not know about Azure Functions, like I said earlier, it's a it's a kind of a serverless um, functions as a service uh, model, where a piece of code gets executed based on a certain event or a trigger or something, right? Uh, so what we're doing now is we have an oh, we have an application, and an inside app application can have different lot of functions that can execute. So our application is almost done deploying. And then uh, when it's done, in a sec, refresh, refresh, refresh. <laughs> Go back. Mm -hmm. In a sec, it will be done. And we wait, we wait, we wait. There we go. Um, refresh. It's showing up here yeah, though. Did it not? Ah, okay, it's not probably showing on in the cache. But in here, if you go to your functions here, I can create a function. And the cool thing is they provide these um, these uh, mechanisms. So I want to be able to see the stuff happening in my IoT hub. There, this one, there. There we go. There's a bunch of other things you can do, like durable functions, Kafka outputs. Wow, RabbitMQT. Oh, wow, wait, RabbitMQT trigger. That's RabbitMQ. Amazing. So let's see a new function. Let's say, let's call this uh, IoT hub trigger. No, no, what? It's supposed to work like this, right? So it's no, no connections available. New, uh-huh, new connection, right. Okay. Now I'm, I'm connecting to that one. I'm just gonna call it event up one for now. It's called IoT app listener. Listener, like that. How is that? Nice. Great. Now, what should be happening is that we should be getting, when it's this done, we should be getting the, the messages in. That's here. The dashboard or whatever it is, uh, public broker. This one. All these messages should be pumped to. This listener, technically speaking, my light just went off. Oh my soul, but nothing just, nothing changed, I think. Uh, there's enough light, I think uh, everything should be fine. Uh, let's see. So we have this working integration. And the cool thing about Azure Functions is you can go in there and you can see the output. You can actually see what's happening. I've opted for the experience of the in portal thing. So you can actually go in here and you can see the messages that will come in. So it will say C sharp, IoT hub trigger, function process, message, message, blah. Okay. That's one thing. And I can actually try it out by using my connection string just to kind of see if this works. The little connection string that I have here. I can go to the IoT Hub Explorer. And this is all the IoT Hubs that I have. So let's just create a new one. Put that one in there. 
Hmm, I need, oh, you know what? I need a different one here. So let's maybe open up a duplicate tab. Thing is, for the IoT Hub Explorer to work, you need to uh, get a connection string of the overall IoT Hub uh, by using a kind of a policy uh, because it needs access to a lot of or all the underlying devices, etc., etc., etc. So what I'll do now is once this thing is loading up, I will then just go to my uh, to my IoT app that I've created. Wow, it's actually receiving messages as we speak, but it's not showing anything here. It, something's definitely happening here. Okay, well, I need to act quick because there's a quota, I think. But anyway, let's see. Uh, so I want to go to my policies. Yeah, so where's my policies? Is it under secure access policies? There we go. I add a new one. Let's just, let's just use the IT app owner. I don't really, at this moment, Okay. We go here we go say you know what actually use that one and you say save and it will pop up my test device there great nice um now we can say okay great but send me a you can actually see the telemetry coming here so let me start let's see what happens i think nothing will actually come in here because it's actually showing if I stop this guy let's disable that for a second otherwise it's kind of eating the messages and not doing anything with it I'm, I'm expecting the messages to come in here which it's not really happening let's quickly debug something else so I just want to go back here to my little MQTT broker instance that I have here let's see what is there maybe there's something wrong with the with this little thing. So it's working containers. It's pulling, killing. Interesting. Killing. Waiting. Terminated. Interesting. This is terminated. I am the terminator. Um why is it terminated? It's not supposed to be terminated. Here we go. So it goes to there. Maybe this is wrong. Is this even a thing? It's either not working or I did something wrong. What we could do is we can actually just remove this broker. That's a nice thing. We just kill stuff. <laughs> Amazing. So I think the topic might be wrong. So if we just leave the topic empty. And yet again, we go to the to the CLI we have before. And we can say, you know what, put that in there and create that one. Will that work? Because it doesn't have a topic. But what I could do is I can also, you know, for debugging purposes, I can probably write my own one in C sharp, debug it, blah blah blah. But I'm more for, more fan of of uh, what do you call it? Using predefined stuff that's there already. So let's see what's happening here. So we have this broker. Containers, it's waiting. River state. Waiting. What is it waiting for? Properties. Okay. All those kind of things work. I think this is fine, right? So it's now waiting. Waiting for what?
this thing starts twice already so it's kind of concerning that it doesn't work this is part of all the experiments that we need to do right So I don't think this really works well. Oh, it's me. ID 10T error. Connection closed. I don't know why, why, why is it? It's kind of restarting all the time. You know what we can do is we can just, uh, technically speaking, we can run this. Do I have Docker on my machine? Should I have Docker? I do have Docker. I do have Docker. Yeah. What will happen if I run this locally? Will it will it even work? Because I don't think this even works. Works normally, right? So let's see. Uh, what is this image? Properties. Docker pool. Okay, but how do I do this whole thing again? How do we do the Docker things? Oh, this is not working. Something is up here. It's, rest it's restarting the whole time. How do I uh, start a Docker image? Docker, right? Docker image. Uh, Docker run. Okay. So what we can do is we can say da, 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 da. that's that. So let's try this for, for, for simplistic sake. Do you mean a bit? That kind of works. No, actually, let's actually use a terminal window. This one, I think it's much better. So Docker run, I think you need to specify a name. Docker run. Okay, help. run image okay that's environment list okay docker run image name is what again going all over the place right now stuff in there jocker jocker run that and then e i think i can just run this right oh, another e there i don't don't want in there come now e, 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 e. there we go and that should work unknown response oci runtime credible e file not found in path all right that's interesting Why is that not working? DC Grim. Hey, my friend, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Trying stuff out. 
this time with MQTT broking. Creating a bridge between two brokers. See if we can uh, get the data flowing. But it's not working. Getting quite annoyed. <laughs> Please, if you are a, uh, a Docker expert, jump in, help out. Let's make magic. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why it's just not working. See, the code is actually very simple. We can just run this in Node. Maybe just run this in Node. Do I have Node? I have Node. I do have Node. So exit. Oh, just let's close that. So what I'll do in uh, in this short period of time, where's this other simple MQTT broker? I think that's a Docker image. I wonder if I go to a simply a HTTP. What's this? Docker HTTP MQTT breach. HTTP, MQ, uh, not this one. Interesting, D. Okay, Docker run. See, so maybe I can, didn't do it correctly. Let's try this again. So if I say, <laughs> you're not the only one that doesn't know anything about Docker. <laughs> Congratulations! Wow! What's is there a capogen I can do here? Is my capogen even working? My capogen is not working. Oh no! I could have given you a capogen there. Congratulations on your son! Wow, and naturalization, you're becoming a Dutch like moi. Nice. Awesome stuff. That's awesome to hear. Uh Docker run. I think you should provide that and then the name leave. I think that should be fine. The repository name needs to be in lowercase. Do I just do this? I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm like an amateur. My logic tells me if I do this, this should work. E is still not found in path. I mean, how is it docker run and then help? E, environmental variables. Docker run options, image, command. That's what it's doing. I don't know why it's not doing that. Anyway, besides the point, let's go a... Uh, hey, this is interesting. Installing and configuring a MQTT broker, blah, 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 start. No, it's not what I want. I want the first one because we don't do, do not need to get uh, sidetracked here. Yeah? Where is the... Where is this... Um, the source code for this thing? Simple IT, let's just do that. I've seen it somewhere. Here we go. I think it's this one. Yeah, there's this one. We are live. Now we can just copy this, I think. See. And it, this is interesting. So let's go through the code here because I've, I've read this before. Um, so this is Node for the folks that don't know Node. Uh, but I'll, I'll, ta I'll take you slowly through it. So we first have our little um, libraries that we require. So it's using MQTT. Then we have the the kind of uh, Azure IoT MQTT um, broker. We have a client, that's our device client. We have a connection string, and we have a IoT app device uh, message. Then, okay, now that's the reason why we need to populate the device and the connection string in the settings, the server and the topic, right? And blah, blah, so what I wanna do is, actually I wanna, I wanna steal this, right? I wanna just maybe 
role. Let's let's copy this. Open our little friend code. Go there. Go new. And I think in here, let me just maybe start a new workspace. Open up workspace. Let's go to. This should be. This should be a sandbox here sitting here, waiting for me to kind of unravel. IoT IoT hub stuff. Okay. Let's open this workspace. That's not even a workspace, really. Let's open a folder. That one, and then we go to dev, we go to IoT hub. IoT, why is this thing not working? It's supposed to be working. IoT demo, okay, it can also work. No. All right, uh, trust the authors, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm gonna remove these files because I don't know what they are. I think they are all old stuff that I don't need, do not need right now. So index.js. And I think I can just call this paste, done. Now I can say node index.js but first of all let's just see what happens now so if i hard code never hard code guys code hard <laughs> it's actually a different thing i say never code hard hard code that's the right way to say things but what are we going to be doing now is naughty naughty we shouldn't be hard coding things but because of experimental laddie does we are going to hard code just to kind of see what breaks so i'm gonna not going to use the Connection string that I specify here. I'm literally gonna be uh, what do you call it? Um, providing it in the code itself. So this is the connection string that I want to be using. This the this one, All right? And my MQTT server. I think it was what was, what was that? That was called Hive, right? The brokerhive.com. And this is the one I want to do. Maybe it's a good idea to do this instead. Just not break things, right? So do that. Now I can always go back to the version. I don't really care. Uh, and the topic is that that's interesting. I don't know what the topic is. So it's going to make it blank. Save that guy. Let's open up and run it to see what happens. Okay, I think that should work. Throw an error, come on. <laughs> Amazing, cannot find module MQTT. No. That is interesting. Module not found. Right, so do I need, I need more things. I think I need more things than just this JS file. All right, because I'm using yeah, I need this package JSON thing. Let's go back here. Let's create a package.json. Put that in there. I think this should be able to work now. So model not found. Still not. Um right. Okay, so that's interesting. So it's working, but it's not really working. Let's see what it does when it runs a Docker container. App run in npm install node bridge JS. Okay, yes. So okay, first okay, I see npm install. Now it's fetching all the stuff, all the lovely libraries and whatnot that's defined in this this package one. I have to find like uh, like this MQTT and all that kind of things. And now this should work if we just say that. <laughs> it's not working. Missing protocol. Uh, right. Missing protocol. Sixty-four line sixty-four. Well, okay. 
If this was the .NET, I would have maybe just started from scratch. Because this is on the assumption that we that we do not know if it's working or not, right? And this is correct, right? So we have the host name, have all the stuff in there that's supposed to be in there, right? That works. The broker. Oh, okay. And I think this was the problem. Oh my soul. I know what the problem was. Boom. This was the problem. This was the problem. And I think I will I think I know what the problem is. Can you believe it? So the problem is this should be MQTT fully qualified slash slash broker and port, which is in this case, I think the 1883 or something, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see what they say here. Where is that? Darn. Um, hola, where's the... I'm flipping all over the place. Hive. Let's go to Hive. Hive. Broker. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. 1883. Okay. Now that should work. Okay, 1883. So let's, let's maybe try this one more time in Azure. Because you don't know what you don't know. And we're in a living lab, right? So we need to, excuse me, we need to kind of try things. That's my kind of train of thought. Don't overthink and don't over try. Let's see. So we, where were we? We were now here on somewhere. I think let's just go in there and we go to the to the resource group. Let's kill this one. Okay. And then uh, once that's ready. For the folks that just uh, joined us a couple of minutes ago, what we're doing now is we're kind of building a bridge between brokers, MQTT brokers. And um, kind of what we're doing is, we, you know, given the fact that we have an MQTT broker and a, and, a, and a kind of a sensor sending data to the broker, and also given the fact that there's rules like uh, we don't have control over this device, it just sends to its own vendor specific broker. We will want to be able to kind of mirror those messages into our own IoT app that we can have more control of it. Potentially, this is the kind of caveat that we're gonna be working on, this bridge. Um, so what I've done now is I've found some code, some containers uh, online that can help us um, with this, just to kind of get a feeling of how it works. And then from there on, we refine our, our, um, our thing, right? So it looks like it's been doing things. It'll probably tell me when it's probably not correct. But anyway, let's see what happens if we just do this. Starting, it's running. And then let's see what happens at the end of the day. Komt goed, like the Dutch say. All will be fine. I must say, it feels great to be back. Um, I've missed, I've missed the kind of tech in my life. So while that's kind of doing its thing, and I think when we do a quick refresh, it should be able to pop up. There we go. Uh, in a sec or two, four container instances, container instances. There we go. And let's show that. Okay, the way is this grading then? Um, no container <laughs> instances to display. Uh, right, where is my container instances resource groups? Did I miss it? 
thought, yeah. Where did it create it then? I don't know. Well, it's now running. Apparently there's some... <laughs> it's working, yeah. All right, so now that's working, at, at least. It'll probably come back in a sec or two or whatever. Maybe the thing is a bit cached or whatever. I don't really know. Let's see what's happening here. There's a spike. Great. Um, is there anything happening? Where's that IoT Hub thing? Yeah. Let's, still, let's maybe stop this again and start this again to see. I don't think this will work, really, in my opinion. I'll move myself a bit here because I can't see. Anyway, I think uh, let's stop that guy there. Let's go to the... IG Hub that we've just started. Oh, its function is enabled. Enable. Let's see if it's getting stuff. Because that's supposed to be getting stuff on the IG Hub now. Of course. It's connected. Let's keep this open for a second. Um, right, so that is that. So I think the thing is, okay, we have this now happening. Uh, there's no topic though. Messages, test topic one, let's see, publish, right, broker, let's go. publish, test, I, I don't know, I'm just putting stuff in here, test, test topic, maybe we can call it test topic one, Farney, let's, let's say Farney test, this should work, right? Overview, containers. How do we stop a container? Let's be able to stop it. The instance. Stop. Delete. Okay, let's try this again. Now I'm waffling. Uh, so we, let's see, the, the topic here is, I think, funny test. Hopefully this can work. Paste, let's see. Probably doing it completely wrong. I don't know. some reason it's not really caching it properly let's see control f5 will probably fix that there we go um okay containers running it it runs connect does it even work i 
Okay, so that's that's the connection string. I think that is the stuff that's supposed to be working. So Farney test. So let's see if we go here and push a message through. Will it actually push through here? I don't think so. It doesn't look like it's doing anything. test so if we say wait a second should be fine right but now why is it not working on this thing or that thing or I don't know it doesn't work I think this topic should be what the, okay what does the documentation say again let's go back to the very simple broker so this one this one Topic. So blah blah blah. Interesting events. And if we look at a source code, it's literally just using the topic that's pref that's defined. So what I'll do again, in this case, let's let's just stop this, right, for now. Then we go to VS Code, which is somewhere, I think, uh, there. Um, and then let's just run this again to see if this, why is this not working? It's not even running. Uh, okay, MQTT. And there should be, one eight eight three, and then the topic should be that, I believe. And let's see if this works. There we go. Now that works. Okay, so now it's doing, I don't know, something. What will happen now if I? Go to the client and push a message. Nothing. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's definitely doing something with the data. There we go. The stuff is working. It looks like it's coming through. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Yes. Okay, so the 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 Alright, so it looks like it was working. It's just patience. Patience, people, patience. Uh, let's let's monitor this again. So let's see now. So for instance, if we say, for instance, here we want a message called temp, and this is, I don't know, 25, or let's say 25, that should be good, fine, and publish. I should put, why is it now going here? That's all, there we go, temp 25. That works on an IT app. Great. Now what I want to do, I want to make this work on, but why is it working? Why is this working? Okay, this is, this. okay, so this goes to the public one, so I don't need to, why is this working though? What? What? But 
but this is terminated. This is probably, oh, you know what? Probably because my broker here is running. So if I, okay. If I stop my broker locally. Okay, let's put that there. And then let's, what do I have? Bunch of things, just not, <laughs> which is not relevant. Let's go open up, I think it's this one. So let's go to the where's the client? Gosh. Client, client, client. Where's your client? I, I swear I had a client open somewhere. So let's connect with a client. We call this Fani test. Okay, and a message will say foo. Publish. Make a new subscription. Fani test. Ash. Right, so if we say, eh, gosh, okay, let's connect again. Why is this not working? Funny test. Funny test that. Subscribe. Okay. Now we say foo. Publish. That foo comes through. But then foo does not come through. Where's that listener? That's supposed to be listening. It's not coming through here. Because this thing is not working. So if I run this thing, it should come through, right? And only when it's listening. Makes sense. So now if I do this, which is, oh, let's just put this guy here. If I say foo1, publish. Foo1 works. It says foo1 here. And foo one comes in. So the whole chain now uh, seems to be working perfectly fine. That's that's amazing. So that's kind of kudos. Great. We kind of have a feeling now how that could work, right? So now the next step now is not doing it here, but I want to actually run it in Azure. Because for some reason, it's not working in Azure as a container instance thingy. So let's start this again. Wait, properties, can I change my properties? I right, cannot change my properties, funny test. So it's funny test, blah, blah, blah. Okay. This is literally the same code running now, but in Azure. So let's say what's the log says loading no logs available and at some point we will see that my eye on the time there got like 10 minutes left folks then i need to go okay so that is working fine so which means my little bridge is running in azure my listener is going here so if i now say you know what give me a u2 publish in one second, I will get foo two right on the right hand side. So that is awesome stuff. So now I have my kind of bridge, bridge working in Azure, with kind of minimal effort. <laughs> um, that's publishing on a certain certain topic, right? So the, this is one of the things I want to be cu make customizable though, is um, have a certain topic. So we can solve this problem that we have. And again, what is the problem? Well, the problem is going back to my little drawing. The problem is that this little bridge needs to be vendor agnostic right so it needs to be bridging any kind of topic from any kind of broker 
So it needs to be configurable. So one can say, well, container instances can solve this problem. And it can, right, by just executing um, basically this for each vendor or device type that you have. Um, and then just pass in different, different uh, sort of call um, device connection strings. Because what would the what would, what would the experience be? So let's say you have two devices, right? So let's say you have completely. Let's kind of redo this drawing a bit because this drawing is not really the truth, right? So what I want to do is you know, maybe let's just make another broker. So let's say we have a. There we go. Move this just down a bit like that. There we go. Now we can party. So let's say we have another broker. Right. That sits there. And we have another, I don't know, let's call it a, let's make this concrete. Let's say this is a, a, um, a humidity meter or something like that. And this is a broker A and this is broker B for verbosity reasons or whatever you might want to call this. These lines should still work the same way, right, with uh, pops up. That's what I want to do. And the thing is, it can, it can work like this. So what, what you could do is you can have a duplicate of this. And this is what we're trying to do is now with container instances is a different variation of this running for a specific broker and other one for the other specific broker that's that's perfectly fine but let's see how far we can push this by by, by creating a piece of software that can run anyway uh, and uh, that's a minimum overhead right so if i had to do this now let's go back to azure which is i think here somewhere so this is now my mqtt broker let's just call this broker a or whatever the case may be uh, let's call this broker two, for instance, and I want this to go to device test device two. So let's go to the IoT hub. My devices. I think someone's phoning me. Yeah, what's this? And let's go and see it's a test device two. Right. And I can just copy that connection string over there, put that in my little this is for device two I'm trying to do now. So I'm I'm mo basically modeling each broker as a device in my IoT hub. So it's still one IoT hub, but the devices in my IoT hub is now certain certain brokers. So of course, it's using the same broker DNS. Doesn't really matter, but it could be this could be a this could be a, a totally different topic, right? So let's do that. So if I now go to my code again, and if I say you know put a new a new service or new instance in there, wait, isn't? I'm not doing anything correctly. It's supposed to be running a lot of instances in the same service for some reason. But now, because now it's creating a new, this will create a new one. One container. How do I run multiple containers? That's also what I want to do. Because this is not what I want. Okay, so that's that. So. Technically speaking, this is also fine of doing it this way. Container instance, container instance, blah, blah. And this will do the same thing. This will do exactly the same thing, but just to a different IoT hub. Um, device, right? I think I'm doing something wrong. There must be a way of running more than one container. Run multiple, multiple container. 
in Azure Container Instance. Multiple component group died. What's this? I see. So you have a kind of a. Oh, okay. Yeah, this could also work. So if you kind of do a. So it's a container group that you that you, def, that you deploy. So the cool thing is here, the container group, you can actually specify a couple of containers. And this is also one way that we can do that by, by specifying each kind of vendor as a group kind of thing, and it can just work, right? I'm just curious to see how this would scale, because if one is down, everything is down. Whereby, so yeah, yeah, on the, on the, on the container side of things, it looks like you can have two flavors, an instance per, per vendor in this case, like an instance per broker, or you can have a group that's one, one instance for many containers. I think the former is, uh, in this case, it just feels better because if one dies, everything dies in one group. I just want to kind of split it up a bit, I would say, especially when you go multiple entities, you know, this, this is great. So this works. And does this even, does this even show me, can this for a second, does this even show me my messages coming in? Let's just go to the log. So I should also stop this person. Stop there, go out there. Um, I want to go to the log here. And if I go and publish, M25. Not even connect on test. I test all subscribe E3 publish. It doesn't look like the stuff is coming in here for some reason. So maybe this is old or I don't know what, what the case is. Uh, but besides the point, that is the, the message that's supposed to be coming into my Azure IT Hub listener. That reacts to... Oh, okay. This is not right. <laughs> that's not right and I think also the reason why it's not right is because the templates are all messed up bolting endpoints you say finding IoT that's where the problem was before so this should be funny IoT in the configuration and not, you know, yeah. Not sample work items. I think that's a bug. Okay. Now, is this working now? Even. I should restart it though. I have no idea. Probably would have been helpful to have some uh, have some logs, but I think this works. Okay. 
maybe maybe let's just let's just this restart this application because I think I think that this is kind of messing up a bit our oh, our little uh, wang in a sense. Okay, let's see. All right, so be, what I want to do is I want to really see if we can get the whole. Um, experience going with the uh, with 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 uh, functions so not in a container because i feel a bit more in control there so the idea is that we have an idea that i had in, uh, in the past was let's let's uh, use a one function that runs when it starts up it looks in the configuration database for all my all my topics that i need to subscribe to and for each one of those it should create a subscription click 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 and then those run in parallel. Then you will also have the same problem, right? So you have one instance of the function doing many things. So maybe we can think about creating a, uh, a trigger, uh, MQTT trigger that allows us to do a couple of things. So let's just see what happens if I publish this. This doesn't go through, yeah. doesn't go through here for some reason there's a there's still a boo-boo step somewhere there but anyway let's uh, let's forget about that for a second and I think for the next stream I think this was a great introduction of what the problem is and uh, what we'll do is um, Azure functions triggers let's say create a Azure uh, well actually let's just go MQ TT, I think there's an Azure function, Azure functions. I think there is one already. Uh, this one, yeah, this is extension. Okay, so this it's it's open source. Um, great, we'll, we'll, we'll use this as a starting block, right? And the cool thing is you have this trigger, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and let's see how the code looks like. So in the source code, there's a uh, MQTT one. There, there is a MQTT trigger attribute, and it receives a bunch of things. So, I think the next stream we can actually go through this code and see what we can use and what we cannot use. Because ideally speaking, I would like us to have um, this because this this works perfectly fine. This uh, this extension. Uh, the only thing is. That it's that it's not really um, allowing me to configure the, the topic, right? So it needs to be multi-topic capable. The here I specify my topic, great, but I want my topics to be different. That's the that's a little little trick. And it's only using one connection string. So I want I want this to be kind of multiple things. But you, what what also can be the case is that we have per vendor we can still use a container. And then when there's a new, I don't know, a new vendor type or something, there can be an API call that can create this container, blah, blah, blah. And then we can call it a day. That's also the case. But I really want to explore that we can see maybe use durable functions and uh, see each of these connection as a task, as a durable task. So next time, homework for next time, I think what we'll do is we'll dive right back into the durable functions, see if we can use this as a kind of starting point to um, to subscribe to multiple MQTT uh, connections and topics and what have you. And then uh, 
see if we can fire this up and see what's the performance of this whole thing like. Right, so I think that was uh, this was great. So awesome! I think this was an awesome show, and thank you so much for the people that has joined us, uh, Peter. Yet again, thank you for that one bit that you cheered. Um, it's amazing, uh, and I would see you folks again another time. Um, how do I close this though? Outro. There's, there's, there's supposed to be an outro. What will happen if I do this outro? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, stream deck. I've never touched this. Uh, let's see. Outro. What will what will happen here? In outro. Okay, so that will go there. All right. So well, in that case, everyone, thank you so much for joining the stream. My name is Fanny Renders, and we'll be back again. I promise. Next time, helping out at Twitter when it's uh, when it's ready. So let's it's going it's going well so let's get back into this whole thing and next time we'll explore azure functions durable functions in this whole thing you all take care have a nice day cheers <laughs> that was not supposed to happen but anyway <laughs> uh that was uh that was my old outro for uh, for the old stream we had. But anyway, great advertisement for the folks. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs>